we are today, hey? Paradise now chant. Brisbane. Twelfth uh, today, isn't it? Nineteenth. Nineteenth. Mm. It is the nineteenth, yeah. It's all just one day for me. You know, that's what happens in the spirit. It just becomes one day. A thousand years is one day, you know. That's another look at the thousand years is one day. Right? Because in heaven there's no calendar, is there? You run out of paper. We're not people of days, months or seasons. We're people of the spirit. And where the, the wind comes from, where it goes, no one knows. And so are they who are of the spirit. Yeah? Yeah. Glory to the Lamb. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad. We've got a lot to be glad about. We've got uh, countless things to be uh, glad about. Because we're born of the glad tidings. Oh, we're glad lads and lassies. Nothing to do with the dog lassies. We're born of glad tidings. We're born of the word. Yeah. So that's nice. Nice to know that I'm not born of some broken down woman and man like my mother and dad was. You know? My mum and dad were broken down. And uh, they had a big sign on their car. And on the passenger side, it had Adam. And on the driver's side, it had Eve. <laughs> In letters three foot high. So broken down, we're, we're born of the superb, superior, divine word, the infallible, born of the infallible, the Christ, born of the water of the word, the flowing fresh, flowing fresh, yeah. flowing fresh waters of the word, refreshing waters of the word. So we're not born shabby show. So we shouldn't behave shabby show. We should be class, personified all the way. Because we're born of class. Right? First class living. Living for the Christ each day. First class living, picking up our cross each day. Right? Isn't that lovely? Okay, uh, the government's throwing out e election sweeteners at the moment. The election's coming up, we're in August, November, yeah, something like that. And uh, giving a $300 energy rebate. Three, I mean, that's a flash in the pan, isn't it? 300 bucks, what are you going to do with that? <coughs> Uh, a meal for three? Is that dining for three? At Macca's or something? $300 rebate from the government for every household. That includes Twiggy Forest <laughs> and Gina uh, Reinhardt, is it? Yeah, Reinhardt. Gina Rhinestone. All the houses 
she's got and all the houses that everyone had. They get the 300. What they do with it, I don't know. They'll probably make a big deal out of it and, you know, jump up and down how they gave someone $300, you know, which wouldn't even register <laughs> in accord to their um, net earnings or whatever they have. Right? Billionaires getting the 300 bill. They should have put a... Um, uh, they should have um, governed that, shouldn't they, properly, you know, for the... Uh, for the people doing it hard. And then they could have kept all that money for something else, but they didn't do that. Because the election's coming up and they want to look good. <laughs> right? Speaking of politics, uh, Scott Morrison met up with met up with Donald Trump at the Thump Thump Tower. Uh, it was for one of his uh, Scott Morrison for his book launch. He's got a new book out. It's so Pentecostal, you know. Uh, a real backslapper, ear tickler with the uh, title uh, Plans for Your Good. It, it was just so Hillsong, you know. And they're just sort of taking that scripture out of Jeremiah, you know. Oh, God's got good things for you, you know. Not bad things. Oh, slap me with a fish. <laughs> you know? Dare not step on anyone's toes. You know, God, God is good all the time, you know. Uh, Dan Moen, God is good all the time. Love, love. Well, the 67 years coming next month, I've been around this planet. I hear a lot of people talking about love, but I don't see much of it. Not even from church people. Yeah, love, really. Love is an action. Love is an action. But truth is in word. Truth is in word. Love is in action. So all the, oh, love, love. And you, you can graffiti the word love everywhere, on every wall. It won't change Jack. You know, unless we turn to uh, God Himself, who is love, and start to do things His way, we would never know the love that God talks about. And it's not unconditional; it has conditions. Yeah. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's a nice one, isn't it? If you love me. So Scott Morrison, uh, one critic gave a, uh, a critique on his book, Scott Morrison's book, and I reckon it painted the perfect picture of his character. The critique was, the book is full of cliché, sentimentality, repetition, wrong wording, and plodding. I mean, he's a plotter. You know, he's got that farm, farm boy look. Uh, he's a plotter. Yeah. And sentimentality, well, that goes with the One World Church, doesn't it, you know? Won't you please play a song, a sentimental song, for my sentimental friend over there. Bring a tear to my... Full of cliché. Yeah, that's very Pentecostal. I'd like to know the clichés were. Uh, wrong wording. You know, bad grammar. <laughs> you know, using the wrong words in the wrong place. 
Repetition, yeah, that sounds very Pentecostal, very uh, hell songish. I mean, hill songish. Uh, what else? I suppose the punchline would be the uh, forewording was done by, believe it or not, Mike Pence, the ex uh, Indiana governor, come vice president of Donny Thump. I mean Donald Trump and uh, Evangelical and we know the story on the Evangelicals in America don't we? Poor, I mean you talk about the gap, <laughs> the gap between the world and Jesus, right? Mike Pence, Republican. Yeah, you can have that for thirty-five dollars at uh, Kurong. Anytime you want it, if you want to read about um, plans for your good, you know, what about plans for repentance or something like that? That'd be better, wouldn't it? No, we don't want to upset the apple cart. Got to have the sails, and uh, <coughs> it's got to be nice and sweet. Otherwise, Donald Trump would uh, not acknowledge it. Or Mike Pence. Victims of teen crime. If you're a person who owns a house, and you are. A, a victim of teen crime, uh, an invasion or whatever, and your house is insured, it will, you, they will not pay out any money because you're a victim. They've got a new clause added in there. If you're a victim of teen crime, they may not pay, pending, it's all pending. I insurance these days is so pending, you know, is it worth it? Is it worth insuring anything? Because, you know, the pendings and the, the fine print is just phenomenal. Who reads fine print? Like, really? Today? People sit down, oh, I read the fine print. How long did it take you? Oh, eight hours. I had plenty of time. You know, I worked four jobs. The fine print. Just sign here. Yep. <laughs> they just sign it, you know. What happens later happens later. And we can see the, the, the decline, can't we, of Australia. We can see it going downhill with the trillion dollar debts and that are coming. <laughs> and uh, even uh, Meals on Wheels are shutting down in Queensland because they don't have enough funding. Meals on Wheels, I mean, couldn't have picked a worse time than winter for the elderly, you know, to have their um, uh, meals presented. I helped out on Meals on Wheels back in the day and uh, I couldn't help myself preaching so they said I better move on. They didn't like me ministering to the people. One philosopher said that, uh, on the ABC, that the deepest form of hope uh, is well accepted too. Deepest form of, of hope is to be able to discuss things. Look, the cavemen were discussing things, weren't they? Hey? Stick, no. <laughs> stick, no. Not stick. Hammer. You know, they were discussing things, weren't they? And, and here we got a philosopher, a Philadelphia cheese bloke, saying the deepest, deepest form of hope is to be able to discuss things. Well, that doesn't add up the, to the Bible. The Bible is an 
odds with that. Jesus' word is the deepest and only hope left for humanity. That's my view. Jesus is, is the only hope left. The word of God. Only hope left for humanity on this broken planet. The children are, are on uh, new drugs now. They call them nangs. Well, I've lost... I've, 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 I can't keep up with the names, you know. Nangs, N-A-N-G-S. Uh, that is uh, a, a slang word for nitrous oxide. <laughs> they're, they're into the... Uh, nitrous oxide canisters, which leads to brain damage. One girl used three litre. Grabbed a three litre canister and just went straight in, inhaling. Now she can barely walk. She can barely walk. She barely knows how to walk. And she's warning the people. Don't nang it. It's no to nangs. This is the world, see, this is the world we're living in. And how blessed to have a direction given to us by the Lord that we don't have to go down that road. Right? The Lord will be enough. He's more than enough. He's the God of plenty. He's more than enough. He's El Shaddai. <coughs> Who's more. He, he's more than enough. Not the, Forget the plenty and all the extra stuff. Forget the things, the material thing. He's more than enough. So when, you know when you've had enough to eat, you're content. So he's more than contentment. Amen? Amen? Is that right? He's more than enough. He's El Shaddai, the God of plenty. The all-sufficient one, God Almighty. Amen? So uh, they finally found a, a winner at the Eurovision 2024. Not that anyone would be interested. But Eurovision 2024 song content. And the winner goes to the person was non binary. Ill. The person was non binary doing a Nemo theme. Like, really? Non binary. I mean, I know that's hard to get your head around. They're not anything, you know? They're not male, female, tranny, any. They're, they're not anything. They're just non-binary. And they won the Euro. Euro. Took the Euro out. <laughs> I tell you, I, I mean, I, I like, I'll just stay in my box, you know? I think beyond the box, I'm too scared to... I'll stay in the Bible box. Hey? With those four uh, biblical walls that surround me. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Yeah. The authorities in Bali are going to put a, uh, an Australian bloke in prison because he had a handful of drugs. <coughs> They reckon it's for life. I mean, they, they say that up front, don't they, to see how much money you can dish up. But I mean, a life sentence for a handful of drugs, and Bali, Indonesia, is one of the biggest drug runners in the world. I mean, talk about hypocrites, right? I don't even know why people bother to go there. You know, they're running drugs, they're prostituting male, female, prostituting, non-binary, 
prostituting transvestites, they're prostituting, you know, homos, homos and momos. They're prostituting everything. It, it, it's a well-known prostitution mecca. And they're talking about, oh, this Aussie's done the wrong thing, he's got a handful of drugs. We'll throw him in the can for life. Look, just ban all Indonesians from coming to Australia. Thank you. Next. Next one. Come forward. <laughs> okay. That's about it for now. We go into the word. We're getting the more ple- in the pleasant zone. Hey? In the excellence zone. The word of God. Live and living and sharper than any two words. So. Sorting out your life. When it talks about the severing of the bone and marrow gel, soul and spirit, and discerning the thoughts of the heart, intentions. That's that Hebrews 4.12. That, that's talking about sorting out your life. That's what the word does. If you let it, if, if we hearken to it, it'll sort out your life and properly place the priorities you know, in your life. And I can assure you, Jesus will be number one if, if we allow him to sort through the soul and the spirit. Uh, getting down to the bone and marrow gel. Well, that would be families. When you talk about bone and marrow gel, you're talking family. You're talking first birth family. He sorts all that. Soul and spirit. That goes back to Adam and Eve, you know. That we are, because of Adam and Eve, we only had the soul operating, but now the spirit is operating too. Separating soul from spirit and comparing and, and showing and revealing the difference. Look where you were, look where you are. You're in the spirit now. You're born in the spirit, live in the spirit. You were in the flesh. You, you, you were born of natural people. Now you're born of <coughs> the spiritual. You're born of God. Jesus' brothers have no mothers. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. Psalm 119. <coughs> this is our 97th. 97th part of the gap. And there is a gap. You'd be assured of that. There is a gap. And if a minister says there's no gap (coughs) between the world and Jesus, they're not to be listened to. They would be liars, unreliable, deceivers. Because there is a gap. As far as hell is from heaven. Psalm 119 verse 1, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Who seek him with the whole heart, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Don't say that, tell that to the Baptist church, please. They walk in his ways. No one can do that, they say. You can't walk in his ways. It's impossible. Only Jesus can walk in God's way. Oh, and Mary and Mother Teresa. But no one else. Maybe the Pope, who doesn't know the word, but, and is not born again. Uh, yeah, they do no sin and they walk in his ways. Don't tell the Baptist church, whatever you do, you, they will savage you. Verse 4, Psalm 119. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. That's all the time. Right? <laughs> all the time. I can't do it all the time. No, you've been commanded to. Hello? Hell? Oh, hello. Hell? Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes, then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. 
I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Uh, let me not wander <coughs> from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared. Read it with me. All the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced. <clears throat> in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I'll meditate on your precepts. Contemplate your ways. I'll delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and, be, and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things. From your law, I'm a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. You know, a stranger uh, needs direction, don't they? Like if you're a stranger, I I'm a stranger in a pilgrim. I don't know where I'm going. I need direction. Okay? I'm a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. Otherwise... You got nowhere to go. You don't know where to go, do you? We're strangers and pilgrims in the earth, right? We're God's people travelling through. Oh, hallelujah! I like that. Verse twenty: My soul breaks with longing for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud, the cursed, who stray from your commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Princes also sit and speak against me. If your servant meditates on your statue, your testimonies also are my delight and my counsel. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statue. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying. And grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. O Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, <laughs> for you shall enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant. Who is devoted to fearing you? Turn away my reproach which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I, I long for your precept. Revive me in your righteousness. Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me. For I trust in your word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in your ordinances. So shall I keep <coughs> your law continually, forever and ever. 
and I'll walk at liberty. For I seek your precept. I'll speak of your testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in your commandment, which I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Remember the word to your servant, upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. There's the hope. There's the hope, eh? The only hope we have left. Not like the philosopher said, the deepest form of hope is to be able to discuss things. <coughs> Hammer. <gasps> Club. You know? We see discussions all over the world. Every day, hey? we see the nations trying to find peace. They're discussing and discussing, and it's so disgusting. It's just become disgusting. They're brawling in the parliaments, fist fighting, and discussing whether they'll dish up a left hook or a right hook. But there's, there is that simple remedy, isn't there, that the Lord has offered. Repentance and forgiveness must be preached to every nationality, starting at Jerusalem, in his name. Then the end will come. Right? <clears throat> Psalm 109 and 50, this is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. The proud have me in great derision, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I remembered your judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Indignation has taken hold of me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I remember your name in the night, O oh Lord, and I keep your law. You see that in 54, your statutes have be, been my songs <coughs> in the house of my pilgrimage. And I've written quite a few songs, you know, and poems. And a lot of it was when I was um, in transit, you know, pilgriming. I was travelling. But... Uh, <clears throat> it says here that your statutes have been my songs. So the scriptures, you know, that, that's what we sing here. We sing the scriptures here. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be saved. <clears throat> and we also uh, uh, major on, on the, the word of God. And it... Uh, Cheers, cheers the soul, doesn't it? The mind, will and emotion. So uh, th that is applicable to this fellowship specifically, that the statutes have been our songs. And um, in the house of my pilgrimage, and this fellowship is a pilgrim house. It's nothing established forever. We're passing through, we're moving on. We don't have an established building. We see it for what it is and we're passing through as strangers and pilgrims in the earth. Psalm 119 and the verse is uh, 55. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. This has become mine because I kept your precepts. You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. I entreated your favour with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. 
I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimony. I made haste <coughs> and did not de delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgment. I'm a companion of all who fear you. And of those who keep your precept, the earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statute. You have dealt well with your servant. O Lord, according to your word, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, and now I kept your word. And now I keep your word. You are good and do good, teach me a statue. The proud have forced, <coughs> forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precept with my whole heart. He wasn't going to venture out in the flesh and uh, deal with them. They forged a lie. He obviously learnt from Moses. Moses got ups uh, upset, he got uptight, lashed out, killed the Egyptian. But uh, here, uh, <coughs> makes it very clear, doesn't it? That uh, he didn't take it into his own hands. Eh? He didn't take it into his own hands. But I kept your precepts with my whole heart, even though the proud uh, forged the lie. He stuck with the word and what the Lord would have him do. Vengeance is the Lord's. But I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Verse 70. <clears throat> Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statute. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me. Because I have hoped in your word. <coughs> I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right. And that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let I pray your merciful kindness be for my comfort. According to your word, to your to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed. For they treated me wrongfully with falsehood. But I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me. Those who know your testimony. Let my heart be blind, less. Regarding your statutes, that I may not be ashamed. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. My eyes fail from searching your word, saying, when will you comfort me? But I have become, <coughs> for I have become like a wineskin in smoke. You know, do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your sermon? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? <laughs> the proud have dug pits for me, which is not according to your law. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. They also made an end, they also made an end of me on earth, but I did not forsake your precepts. Revive me according to your loving kindness. 
so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth forever. O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For all are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would have then, I would then have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me. For I have sought your precepts, <coughs> the wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimony. I have seen the consummation of all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. And today we're starting in verse 97. We start with an amem, and it's something to remember, isn't it? We're starting with an mem, which relates to water and nations and peoples in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew text. So, <clears throat> this is something I, I believe the Lord wants everyone in the world to know and to see. <coughs> Mem, peoples, nations, waters, right? Everyone can hearken to this and heed this, they'll do well. Oh, how I love your law. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation. Ten minutes a day. No. All the day. All the day. Hey? He, he's chewing the cud. All the day. Amen. The word of God. Not just a... You know, a quick read, but a quick read, and then a meditation and a a uh, a perusing in the inner man, in in the uh, the deep, as the Lord speaks deep to deep, and we see that is so because of the next verse in ninety eight, you through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. You see that? <coughs> For they are ever with me. But that's what the Word will do. The Word will make you wiser. That you'll be one step ahead. One step ahead of you. One step ahead. That's because he, he loved. He didn't run from. He didn't try to change or manipulate or uh, take from, add to. It was just straight out. I love your law. I love your word. Right? I love your word. See, in Psalm 119... We've got the uh, blessing of uh, the different variations of the word, like precepts, statutes, judgment, testimonies. This is all the word, all uh, facets of the diamond, the word. Right? The word is like a diamond, and yeah, many facets, very beautiful. And very costly. We know that through Revelation because the Lord said to the lukewarm church to come and buy. The word is very, very expensive. That it, uh, the price, the price uh, for the revelation is your sin. There's no higher price. A human can pay. Come buy from me. Right? 
come buy from me, the Lord said to the lukewarm church. Hey? Might even have a quick look at that in Revelation 3. Uh, the lukewarm church. Hey? Lukewarm church. I counsel you, we're in Revelation 3, 18. I counsel you to buy from me <coughs> gold refined in a fire that you may be then rich and that your garments may be white. Hey? You may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and not your eyes with eyes up that you may see. You see, when you buy and you give up your sin, you'll have the white garments. Your, your clothes will be, uh, as it says here, white garments. Not spotty, not wrinkled, not chocolate. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in a furnace or in the fire that you may be truly rich with white garments. You give up your sin. That's the prize. To have the blessing of the realisation of what you're reading. Right? Realisation of what we're reading. That we'll see the excellencies of the Word and the Lord and the journey and, and the, the salvation and the beauty and, and the power that the Lord has brought us in to through the blood. Amen? Initiating it with the blood. Amen. Oh, how I love your Word. It is my meditation all the day. Okay. You can think about a lot of things. You know, you can think about a lot of things all day. Some people just wear themselves out thinking about old crusty stuff going back, you know. that Not, not going to change. Move on, you know. Don't, don't keep going over the old ground. Forget it. It's done. It can't be changed. What's done is done. Oh, if I only would have. If I only had time. Only time. Eh? Yeah, Mr. Whitaker saying that, didn't he? But that's, God gives us that opportunity to move on from the first birth to the second birth, coming out of the world and into the Christ, the substance, no longer bogged down with all the days, months, seasons. Sabbath, all the rest of it, because he is all of that in one. He, he is I am. I am what? Well, he, he's, he's your Sabbath, he's your Saviour, he's your Lord, he's your King, he's your brother, he, he's your uh, water, he, he's your, you know, your life. He is. Therefore I am, and without him I'm not. Amen? Amen. Because in him we live and move and have our being. We have to believe that he is Hebrews. Uh, the Lord said through Paul to the Hebrews. Unless you believe that he is. You know, we've got to believe that, that he is. The rewarder of those who uh, meditate all day in his work. He's the rewarder of those who... Uh, Diligently right? follow him. Verse 98, Psalm 119. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. See, it's the Lord that does it. It's not you white knuckling. It's the Lord that does it. It's the Lord that gives you the ministry, not some organisation or a man. If you don't have it before you were born, you don't have it. And if you have it, you'll be doing it. 
you'll be the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist if you have it. If you don't have it, well, you won't be doing that. You'll be still at the cannery or whatever you're doing, you know? Because that's the way the Lord does it. He makes you to do it gracefully. <laughs> he makes you to do it gracefully. In other words, it just happens in the spirit. For they are ever before me, enemies ever before me. Right? Verse 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers for your uh, testimony are my meditation. That was by the Spirit. A person that moves in the Spirit will have more um, understanding than the teachers. Eh? Or those that think they're teachers. But they must move in the Spirit. There must be people uh, who love the Word, who love the Lord. People that love the Word basically do what it says. They don't prioritise anyone else. They don't prioritise anything else. The Word is, is uh, the be-all and end-all. Bees, knees. Uh, hey? I have... The, the, see, the Lord wants this. The Lord wants this for the waters, the nations and, and the peoples. The Lord wants this. The Lord wants people to mount up with wings like eagles. He wants people to meditate on his word. That doesn't mean read 600 pages a day. Hey? It doesn't mean that you uh, uh, l listen to the Bible for 10 hours a day. It means you grab something that the Lord's led you to and you sit on that, probably for a couple of months, you know, and uh, he'll just keep bringing the beauty out of it and you get a different colour of the rainbow each time, you know, that, so that you'll be situated around the throne in, in the spirit, you know. You'll be bowed up. I'll be calling you Mr Bojangles. Because <laughs> you, you haven't been working it and you sit wearing rags. <laughs> but at least you're around the throne. Hey? You're like the, the beggar. Hey? Lazarus. Rich man in Lazarus, I should say. And he was uh, he was a beggar, but at least he had the Lord's nod, didn't he? He had the uh, heads up from the Lord, even though he's only a beggar. He was, must have been a meditator, right? Eh? The rich man certainly wasn't. He was out and about uh, extending his uh, real estate portfolio, probably. He ended up in hell. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies. That's what the, the word of the Lord has done for this one. Right? That's what the testimonies have done. That's what the word of God, God has done. When he decided to love the word Jesus decided to love with all the heart, soul, strength and mind. He become wiser and more understanding. Psalm 119, 100. Nice. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. <coughs> That's a good general, isn't it? That's a good general quote I understand more than the ancients uh, you know like how we get a thousand years is a day all that sort of thing I understand more than the ancients uh, because I keep your precepts you see the power in obedience 
Obedience is a powerful, <coughs> a powerful um, blessing. When we obey the Lord, so much uh, fruit comes out of obedience. You know, and that's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants Luke eight twenty one manifested in, in the the waters and the nations and the people's lives. As soon as you see that <coughs> waters, nations and peoples, you just write that off as the world. He, he wants the world to have uh, Luke eight twenty one manifested. Hey? We got a bit of Luke eight twenty one in the verse one hundred here. I understand more than the ancients because I keep key word is keep your word. Precepts. I keep your word. Then the eyes are open. And everyone remembers when they they kept the word. When they first came to the Lord, I remember when I kept the word. And I only just first came to the Lord. I, I kept the bit that said repent. <laughs> I kept it and I went and repented in front of witnesses. And I've said for decades, it was like I had uh, dropped a three-way acid LSD trip. It was so electric. And that was only one thing. That was only uh, one precept. Repent. And the power, the power... <coughs> I was understanding more than the ministers I was going to. See? Because I was keeping the precepts. I was keeping line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here and a little there. I have, I understand more than the ancients. That could be, you know, those who are in the Lord longer than me or those who way back, birth of God's time. You know, it could be back in the Old Testament. You know, the Old Testament people, they didn't know about uh, Christ as the substance, you know. They were in the shadow. So they had a lot of stuff going on there. But that could be, uh, when he says the ancients, that it's not a, de a specific time, but it, it covers a, a range, doesn't it? I understand more than the ancients because I keep your word. So we see the value there. They're my brother, sister and mother. Hear the word of God and keep it. See? All the way through from Genesis <coughs> to Revelation. Keeping the word. Even if you only have a little bit of the word, it's best to have a little bit <coughs> of the word and keep it than to have a lot and don't keep it. It's best to know one song on a guitar all the way through, start to finish, fluently and nicely. Able to present it nicely all the way through, no bumps in the road, then to know 10 songs or 100 songs and know one line, you know. Okay, is there anything else on that? Or is that it? Yeah. Yeah, you can't stop him. Man, how long have you been playing guitar? <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> It's getting it on. Hey? Light shining through on you. I understand. More than the ancients. I understand more than my dad. When he was around. Right now, I understand more than he understood. And he's, his dad and his dad and his dad. 
because they didn't meditate on the word of the Lord. Okay. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. Psalm 119, 101. I have restrained my feet from every evil way. See, it's all coming together. It's knit one, pearl two. You know, it's stitching together, knitting together. You know, we, we started off with the love, didn't we? Started with the, a love for the word, not trying to change it, add to it, take it away for grandma or mum or the children or the grandchildren or the daughter or, or, or the husband or the wife. You're not trying to please them, you're pleasing the Lord. And then this is when uh, conflict and division and separation comes. It's inevitable. Jesus said, I never came to bring peace. I came to separate. Hey? So if they want to say that's a cult leader's word, they need to go and uh, talk to Jesus and tell him he's a cult leader. Hey? I never came to bring peace. I came to bring division. I come to bring a sword. To divide. Sort out who's his. Who's who in the zoo. Psalm 119, 101. I have restrained my feet from everything that violates the instructions of the Lamb. Lord, light. The Lamb Lord Light, Jesus. He's a Lamb, He's a Light. He's Lord. And restrained. Who's done this? Who's done they this one's done it himself. He done it. I have restrained my feet. He's brought Everything into subjection to the word. Amen. Amen. He brings everything in subjection to the word. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. You can't keep the word and do the evil way. Right? Amen. That's contrary, isn't it? At chalk and cheese. That I may keep your word. I want to be faithful. That verse is about faithfulness. I want to be faithful. And this is for the world. This is what the Lord wants from the world. This is mem. Hebrew for waters, nations and peoples. You know? And he will have that. These are the sort of people in the Lord's house. He's going to take them out of every nation and from every people and tribe and tongue. Okay? Which Mem relates to. Mem relates to tribe, tongue, nation, people, water. He will take them out. He will take those who love his, his word out. Hey? Those who meditate and, and those who peruse and, and dig and look for what he says, waiting patiently, not trying to be someone. So they can go out and bash people on the head and say, look what I know, I'm this and I'm that. Because the Lord will just cut that one down. You don't like proud people. We must be humble. The more he shows us, the more humble we should be without telling everyone, I'm humble. I'm really humble. No, you're a hum not humble. <laughs> you silly person. Right? 
So these are the people out of every nation, tongue and tribe he's going to take. Okay? They'll be wiser and more understanding. And this is all demonstrating uh, the Lord's uh, character, isn't it? And people look on and say, he's not a dimwit, that bloke. You know? He, he's sweet. And that brings glory to the Father. Through Jesus. Okay? I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not departed, verse 102, from your judgments. For you yourself have taught me. We know that, don't we? Okay? If we go over to Ephesians, we'll see that here. Word. Scripture confirms Scripture, doesn't it? <coughs> we go to Ephesians. Chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Because, because of their ignorance that is in them. Because, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to sin, giving themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness as well as greediness. And here is the verse. But you have not so learned Christ, if <coughs> indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, and let me paraphrase, and nowhere else. Hey? If you have been taught by him. Hey? Heard him and been taught by him. I have not departed from your judgments, from your word, for you yourself have taught me. You see that? <coughs> you yourself have taught me. And we're in the right frame of mind and heart, and we read the word, the Lord will teach you. But we don't get carried away and go running around saying, Oh, I'll sit with the Lord and He was teaching me this, and it, it doesn't add up. It's just, uh, wrong. The Lord didn't teach you that because when I compare that with other scripture, it doesn't add up. It falls short. And everyone in the house said, Amen. Glory to the Lamb. Hey? I have not departed from your judgment. There's no departure whatsoever. So he obviously, uh, at this stage, wasn't a backslider, was he? Because he has not departed. This is the change. Ch -ch -ch changes turn the face of the straight. Ch -ch changes. Look out, you Baptists. Ch -ch -ch changes turn the face the straight ch -ch changes look out to Pentecostals God did make me and he has the time so we got Psalm 119 103 how sweet oh I like that how sweet are your words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Everyone has different tastes, don't they? Hey? The Baptist church is not my 
cup of tea. It's not my taste at all. Hell song, hill song. As one young man said to me, oh, yeah. I gave him a bit of literature and he really liked it. He got all excited. I thought, oh, that's nice. He's about my son's age. About 43, 40, no. He's a... <laughs> Brother Shadrach, he's 25, isn't he? he? And he was all cheery, you know. And I love to get too spiritually rough with the young fellas. Gave him some literature and he said, oh, me and my... Uh, or whatever her name was. It was like he found himself a, a chick. We're going to Hillsong soon together. I said, oh. I said, really? I said, ah. I need to go to a real church, not, not a sissy's church. Right? He sort of didn't understand what I was saying. Because he obviously doesn't love the law as much as I do. But anyway... How sweet are your words? How sweet it is. How sweet it is to be loved by Christ. Hey, right? bit of James Taylor, that's what we need. No, we don't. I heard down the line that, uh, the, as it was said, that James Taylor was uh, homosexual. Yeah. So they say. I'm not saying that, but so they say. But who were they? I don't know. I reckon he was gay. That's the word they use, isn't it? Gay? Yeah. How sweet are your words to my taste? <clears throat> I mean, it's horrific to think that people don't w w want uh, to hear the truth. It it's just not their taste, you know? Uh, the scriptures talk about the appetites of people. We must tame the appetite. Hey. And many people have a, an, an appetite and a taste for compromise and for religion. They love religion. I've noticed that. People love religion, but they don't love righteousness. Hey. And there's a great gap between religion and righteousness. Religion uh, fits in nicely, snugly with the world. The wide roads, see, wide. They fit in nice, you know. But righteousness, nah, it, it's narrow. And, and few be they that have a taste for it. Few be they that walk thereby. Amen. Amen. But many be they that take the wide road because it's easy for the now. But the wide road leads to destruction. How sweet, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know. It's sweet to know what the Lord says, which is, forward slash, thus says the Lord. It's sweet to know what the Lord says. It's so sweet to the soul, to my taste. No. But it wasn't uh, sweet to Eve's taste, was it? Uh, she was looking at the fruit in the garden and she said, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be good for tasting. That'd be good for the palate. But the truth wasn't. But that was, that tree was. It was going to make her someone. See? Uh, and then it all came tumbling down like a deck of cards, didn't it? We all become prisoners of, of darkness. Eh? Bound for hell. And multiple millions still. Multiple millions and billions still on the wide road to hell, on the highway to hell. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How beautiful 
whereas the world would see that uh, as bitter. Like, they think you're a bitter person when you speak the sweet words of Jesus. They, they call, I've been called bitter. Oh, you're a bitter person. Right? You're a bitter person. You're a mean person. You're, you're an angry person. You're a hateful person. It's only because the Word of God is not sweet to their taste. See? They prefer lies and compromise. They prefer uh, to adjust the Word of God to suit family and friends. Adjusting it so that there's no friction in the house. But Jesus never came to bring peace in the house. He came to bring the sweet word, the sword of the Spirit. And when the sword of the Spirit comes down, you know who's whom. You know? There's no grey areas to run to. You sort out who's who. When the full council sword drops into a house, oh boy, oh boy, people run for the hills. <laughs> or they, at best, try to hide what they really believe and what they really think. Oh, I believe in God. It's just... Ah, as soon as someone says, I believe in God, it's just, oh, I, I brace myself. Oh, Lord, undergird me. Because <laughs> I know they're going to get a big extended line of excuses. It's just that, you know, uh, no one can, can uh, keep the word of God only Mother Teresa, you know, who was a, a millionaire and, and a liar. I, I, look, it's not, I'm not calling her a liar. <clears throat> she calls herself a liar. Mother Teresa deceased. It's too late. She can't change her books. If you look in her books, you'll see... There are other ways to heaven. You know, but she had them fooled, didn't she? She had them fooled on the wide road. They thought she was an angel. They thought she was some saint. Well, uh, they thought St Nicholas was a saint too, didn't they? Old Nick. My mum used to call him Old Nick. That was, a, that was a forward slash for the devil. Old Nick. St Nicholas in the sandy season. So they don't like that. It's not to their taste. Oh, that's not to my taste. I accept that and move as fast as I can away from people like that. That's not to my taste. I don't like to go to that church. It's not for me. This place is not for me. Thank God for that. Whew. Thank God for that. It's one thing a, a local church does not need in these days is leaven and lies and, and deceit and compromise and, and slackness and partiality that will bring the whole show down. There has to be a, a stern foundation to stand on. A biblical messianic uh, doctrine to stand on that you be able to face any enemy at any time. 
Hey? How sweet are your words, yeah. Psalm 119, verse 104, through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Every false way. Doesn't matter who's operating behind the false way. Doesn't matter if family, friends, relatives, <coughs> governments, churches. Doesn't matter who it is. If it's a false way, you hate it. You hate the false way. And please don't get me mixed up with some rat bag that's going to be on the TV tonight on Channel 7 Spotlight. And he's, he says, oh, God said to hate your mother and father. He's a total fruitcake. And, and he's got some system going. He reckons he's walking with the Lord. but Boy, boy, this guy's taking kidneys. Everyone in the congregation has given their kidney. He must be making a quid. And the reporter said, how many kidneys have you taken? He said, I've, I, I've lost count. He's lost count. So, uh, I don't know what he puts that under, down to the bone and marrow jealous. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's probably got that mixed up with Hebrews 4.12. Marriage, and bone. He thought, sort of, I'll just settle for the kidneys. They're worth a quid, aren't they, the kidney? I don't know. I think they are. The old kidney, Sister Hannah's given a nod there. And the, the head's up. See there? Yeah. And old Shadrach sitting there going, is that right? <laughs> Taking it all in. They're worth a quid. So hang on to your kidney. If you go to that meeting, you know, I don't mind a bit of kidney pie, but I mean, spotlight tonight, you know. If you're running a local fellowship and um, everything's legit in the eyes of the Lord, not the world, you, you know, I like it. I like the beauty of it that you don't have to give jack about anyone because no one will prove you wrong. You don't have to give Jack what anyone thinks or says because whatever they say, you just say, well, you show me in the scriptures what you're banging on about and I'll prove you to be a fruit loop. That's all you've got to say. There's no fear. Oh, people might find out. I better stop the congregation from watching the TV, like the JWs, I better, and the 7 8 event. I better stop the... Uh, congregation from watching the TV. They might find out I'm a cult leader. That's a stupid person. You will be found out if you're a liar. I've only seen that recently. But you will find that out. The minister's speaking the truth which does not vary. There's no variance in the heavenly father of lights in whom there's no change or variation of thinking or deed and everyone said you know what I mean so there's no problem there I don't care who watches what you can go on the internet and you can look around and search you can try anything to bring me down they've tried for 37 years and they all fell flat on their big fat face and nothing's done and I like that I like that sort of thing you know it's a victorious thing, you know. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. It was like David, you know. He said, look, I, you gave me the lion and the bear, punched the bear out, ripped the, the lion's head off. Now, what about this big galoot? You know, put him in my hands, Lord. Bring it on. You know, I like that. And same with Jesus, you know. He, they had him on the crest of the hill. And... They were going to push him over or whatever they thought they were going to do. He said, look, excuse me, fellas, I've got things to do. <laughs> and just walked through the midst. And they parted, like, just like parting the Red Sea. And they were, they were all piled up there and they just parted. He just walked through. There was no fisticuffs or nunchucks. It was just, excuse me, fellas, I've got things to do. Father's just wanting me to do another job. And he just toddled through the middle. 
once again the beauty and, and the assurance, Holy Ghost assurance and the beauty and the power of having the truth, the revelation, knowledge and understanding and love for the Lord and His Word. And you don't have to bother. Who's going to come and attack? Who's going to say? Who's going to say this? And who's going to say that? Oh, I'll have to change the doctrine. There's a program coming on TV tonight. Ah, oh, what? Expose me. Ah. No, I'm not interested in kidneys. Sorry. I'm not a kidney collector or a kidney seller. So here we are. We're finishing in Psalm 104 today. I hate every false way. Hey? Hate every false way. Because every false way is the wide road. You know that? There's no false way on the narrow road. Amen. The way of the Lord is pure and proven, like silver in the furnace seven times. So if any of my enemies or adversaries are listening, all I can say is uh, keep digging, keep trying, try and find something you have on me, but uh, you'll fall flat, flat on your face. That, that's what I believed from day one to this very day and will always believe. Because the Lord is with me all the way. And uh, I pity anyone that would come against the man that the Lord's will. That's very foolish. Everybody in the house, sin. Thank you, Jesus, once again.